is so crazy that uh, I found in the back of the Tsefer that we always read from Kisir of Shmuel. I found it a while ago, forgot about it, and I was looking through the back of the Sefer again, and I found this again. So let's just go right into the story. Um, in the back here of this book, Rosh Moharwit, who is from Tzvas, uh, in the early 1900s, he tells over a bunch of different stories from Tzvas, different things that happened and back then, a lot of crazy stuff. So he tells over a story here that his father told him. And this story is very wild. And I'm just going to go right into it. So he says, um, My father, may his light shine, he told me that he knew a man who had a friend who was Yachol Ha'inyan Shel V'choyver Chover. He knew how to do the Inyan of Choyver Chover. Uh, if you're like me and you barely learn Chumash, which is a big shame, because I need to learn more Chumash, I always forget it. A Choyver Chover, it's in Sefer Dvarim, it literally translates into a snake and scorpion diviner. Someone who was able to move his lips and say uh, certain things and um, all the snakes will come to him. All the scorpions. In the story, it just talks about snakes, but it means that he can say uh, things and like spells or whatever and then all the snakes from all over the world wherever they are will come to this person. And in the Torah, it's Aster to do this. Obviously, it's Isra de Raisa, I believe. Um... Says over here, Right, I don't know where I got the scorpion part from. Maybe that was just in my chumash. But here he says that he's able to gather all of the snakes into one place. And these two men, his father's friend and the person who knew the guy who was a chayver chaver, were actually anashim charedim. They're actually from people who were charedim. So that's also interesting. So he says, So he said to his friend. He said that if you want, I'll show you something cool, but not in the town, but not in the Yishuv, because the Yishuv will get destroyed. Our city will be destroyed. I think he was talking about Tzvat. But come with me to the field. Let me make this a little bigger. Sorry, it's a little bit of a poor screenshot. Um, and I'm going to show you in the field. So they went to the field together, and the guy who was the Chayr Chavar told his friend to stand on a tree that was on the mountain to watch. And he went down to the valley. Right? And it was very, it was a very, very big uh, place. And he started to be Mifatfet Biswasav. He started to make motions with his lips and whisperings and different things like that. My neighbors like to slam the door, sorry. Upitoim his chilu lavoi shayorais shayorais mikol arboruchais nechashim gedolim v'noiroim mamish kikoyras beis habad. It says, and after he started whispering and saying stuff with his lips, right away, shayorais and shayorais caravans, well, let's say caravan, but basically like thousands and millions and a lot of, from all directions, Huge snakes, very, very scary, gigantic snakes that were the size of a Kairos Beis Habad. Kairos is a beam. Beis Habad is a... What's the Beis Habad? Beis Habad is a... Something with like a wine press, something like... It's, it's, it's a big area. There's, um, it's not... It's, that's sorry, no, that's a gut. Beis Habad is something else, but... The beam is also very heavy and also very big. So this guy is saying that he saw his friend use his lips and all of a sudden gigantic snakes came from all over the world. Right? Obviously he's saying that if they were in the Yishuv, they would have completely destroyed the city. So that means that these guys were gigantic snakes. And they are pretty gigantic snakes, but even back then there were bigger snakes. Who knows? Amar al-Ilan this person who was standing on the tree watching all this, his different parts of his body started shaking so much out of the fear that he had because of this of 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 what he's been of 
what he saw. All of a sudden, there's a million snakes that are coming after his friend over there, and he's watching this all from the tree. And he's seeing creatures that he never saw before in his life. Um, and even though he knew what was going to come, like he knew this was going to happen, like his friend told him this was going to happen, he still had pachad mavis. He was still scared as heck. Right? That all these snakes came from all of the things. Kimoy edrei tsoin. Kimoy like a like a flock of sheep, and and they and they were all surrounding his friend, who called them. Now here here is here is where it gets a little bit uh, out there. It says upitam shama kol anachutz akum mechaveroi ha'oymed bein hanechashim avoy ani avud. Basically, he was saying, basically, he heard a groan and a cry from his friend. And he said, Oy vey, basically, like, I'm gone. I'm, I'm a goner. I'm done skied. I ain't coming back from this one. Basically, that's what he said. In Yiddish, that's basically what it says, if you can imagine that. Vishal I soy mina ilan. Right? And the guy on the tree asked him, Why are you crying for? And he said, Like this. He says, Because there is a nachash saraf. I think when he says Nachav Saraf, I think he means like a poisonous snake. Not a snake. I thought it was like a snake that like throws fire, but I made that up. I thought it was a dragon too, but I don't think it's a dragon either. I think it's just talking about a poisonous snake. If anybody has some clarity on that issue. And this snake is called a Pesant Cherish. A Pesant Cherish, actually it's in Tehillim, which we're going to talk about soon. The Pesant Cherish is a viper that is deaf. So this guy is saying that there's a snake that is poisonous. Vipers are poisonous. All right, I'm pretty sure. And it's called a viper that cannot hear. He said that it only has one ear that it, that it hears from, right? And the second ear, he cannot hear from it. And this viper has a lot of tsar when the people who are chayver, chayver, call it, right, and he has to come from wherever he is in the world, he doesn't want to always come to whoever's calling him. He's always digging and, I guess, trying to put his ear into the ground so that he will not hear the call of the malachim, of the whispers. So this snake is already on the ground, but every time he tries to go, I guess, sideways or something like that, he tries to bury the ear that he hears from into the ground. Because then he won't be able to hear the people who are whispering and calling these snakes from all the world, and then he won't have to come. Which sounds pretty good for a snake. Maybe sometimes he's going along the way or whatever, and his, and his, uh, and his ear is not uh, Deaf, I guess, because the ear that does hear is up or whatever, on a different angle that it could hear from. And he does hear it, and he has to come. So uh, so then the person who whispered it, for sure, is, is basically, like, he's dead. Everybody knows that if you call and this snake comes, it's dead. I guess this was Chayvr Chayvr stuff, like the haq that they knew about. Ki hapesen oise mimenu kala. This viper makes from him nothing. He just basically He basically destroys him. And he, and he feels that, that this time, this uh, viper's ear is not, uh, was not deaf. The ear that was not deaf actually heard the whisper. And he's already coming. He already knew. Somehow he knew. But al Cain. Who avud? He's gonna die. Vitzak, vitzak, Shema Yisrael. He said Shema Yisrael, and he stood on the tree. This guy who was standing on the tree, and he saw. He saw coming towards his friend Nachash Saraf Gadol Noira Vaoyam Meoid, a gigantic poisonous viper snake. Shebichol Hanechashim Loy Hayu Kamayim. There wasn't any other snakes there like this snake. The car of Eitzelish, and it went towards his friend. Sorry, he went towards the guy in the tree. Veloy also like klum. Oh no, sorry, he went to the guy who called him. He didn't do anything to him. Rak nafach loy 
it just blew into his face. This poisonous viper that can't hear went over to the guy who called him, and he blew in his face. And the guy in the tree, shuv loy shama v'loy pra'oy sakal. He couldn't hear him, and he couldn't see him at all anymore. And then all the snakes left. And he went down from the tree. And he didn't find from his friend only a little bit of dust that was burnt. So I guess from this snake's poison, he like melted or whatever. He was bit, not melted, sorry. He, he was burnt. And now he just had dust like after a cremation or something. And he gathered them up in a mitpachat, a little handkerchief, cloth, towel. And he cried over him, and he brought him back to the city, the cover as offer, and they buried the dirt. Hashem Yishmarenu. Hashem should watch over us. That's the story. It's pretty, I don't know what to do with this story, but uh, it's a pretty uh, wild story. Maisa man, like that's a, that's a very interesting thing. He says, also I didn't take a screenshot of it, but he says that the, he continues the story a little bit. He says, while the guy was screaming, I'm just going to read this part because it's a little interesting. He said, while the guy was screaming, he told him about this peasant cherish, about the deaf viper. He says, this is also, there's also a remnant to this in Tehillim. So I found it, it actually has the wrong source here, but I found it in my Tehillim. It's in Perik Nunches, Kapitel Nunches, uh, Posik. Where to go? Oh, hey. And Vav. It says, Chamas Lonmoy Kidmus, Chamas Chamas Nachosh, Kimoy Pesen Cherish, Yatim Oznoy. It says, they, they have venom, like the venom of a snake, like the viper that is deaf and closes its ear. Right, so that it doesn't hear the melachim, the charmers, even the caster of spells, who is the most skillful. Right, he says they have venom. Whoever he's talking about, I guess these evil people have venom, just like this poisonous viper snake that doesn't hear and closes its ear. And why is it closed its ear? Because he doesn't want to hear. So there's a remiss completely to this snake that it's a real thing. In Tehill. Um, but he asked a question here. Right? So if he writes Pesin Cherish, Imkin Huenu Shemeh. Right? So this is already like I'm already using my Gemara skills over here. They're asking a question. The Pasuk says Pesin Cherish, right? It means he, that he's deaf. So why does the Pasuk have to say, Yatim Oznoi? Why does he have to say that his that his that his ear is closed? If he doesn't hear, then it doesn't make a difference if his ear is closed. He he can't hear. That he's deaf only in one ear. Right, and therefore he closes that ear so that he doesn't have to hear it. Anyway, he ends off Hashem Yishmarenu again. Hashem Shalacha. So. Yeah, this is just a crazy story about uh, a viper. And um, I wanted to say over some other stories what I want to say today. There's a story that I read last night. Um, so Parshish Koyrach, it's all about that there was a lot of, uh, there was a big machoikis, big arguments I saw in the back of this Parsha booklet that's talking about making peace. So... Because the opposite of Kairach is making peace, making shalom, making shalom bias. So there's a so there's a cute story in there with the Aptarav. The Aptarav, um, it was Erev Pesach, and uh, the Aptarav, should I say this story? Sorry, I'm blinking out. I'm blinking out over here. Okay, so the after of it was Erev Pesach, and uh, and uh, I guess and his and they had special matzahs that he had baked for Erev Pesach that were shmura and whatever you know, and he put them aside, and 
And then they had regular matzos, matzos pshutos that weren't, I guess, shmura. You know, back then it was a little bit different. Today, Baruch Hashem, we have matzah factories and a million things happening. And back then, it was a little harder to, you know, bake so many matzahs or to have a shmur and all these different things, especially wherever they were. So it was a different type of uh, situation. So he had three matzahs for the Seder that were matzah shmura, and, and he had put them on the side. And uh, it was Erev Pesach, and the Gabai of the Tzedakah was coming around. Everybody was giving a little bit of food, a little bit of matzah for the poor people of the, of the town. And you know what Erev Pesach is like in a house. It gets crazy, it gets busy, um, and all these things. So in the whole confusion of the matter, she just told her servant, oh, go get those matzahs or whatever. And uh, they gave to the Gabai Tzedakah the three matzah shmuris that were for the Rebbe, for the Seder. And when she realized what happened, she kind of bugged out, and she was like, what do I tell my husband? You know, is the Rebbe not going to have matzah shmur now? It's too late to bake new ones, all these different things. So she just put three regular matzahs inside the bag and didn't say anything, and yalla. Seder went, the Rebbe did the Seder. About, I think a week after Pesach or something like that, um, a couple came to the Rebbe, a couple came to the Aptarov. A guy wanted to get divorced from his wife, or maybe it was, yeah, I guess, I think it was, yeah, I think it was uh, after Pesach, even though whatever. Yeah, it was after Pesach, he wanted to get divorced from his wife because his wife refused to cook Pesach food in pots that were shiruya, meaning that she was going to cook with the same pots, I guess, that they used that they would eat kibrachs in and see them do not eat kibrachs and he wanted to be machmer on that and I guess they didn't want to use the pots and she didn't want to switch her pots or she didn't want or they couldn't get new pots or I don't know exactly the whole situation but he wanted to get divorced from his wife because of that little chumrah which is not so much of a chumrah today but maybe back then it was more of a chumrah but today it's easy to easier to not eat kibrachs for sure um, you know, everyone makes such a big deal about the Gabrox, not Gabrox, and it's really not like the end of the world, whatever. But uh, but this guy wanted to get divorced, so the Aftarab said to him, Hold on one second, he called in his wife, and she said, and he said, Tell me the truth, what happened with the matzahs on Erev Pesach? And she said, I don't know what you're talking about. And he said, Don't worry, you don't have to be scared. He said, What happened? And she said, and she explained the whole entire story, and he said, and the after Rav said to this guy, he's like, you see, he's like, I had to eat matzah pshutis, and I'm the Rebbe, and I'm not machbed on it, because he's a Rebbe, because that's what a tzaddik does, and you're going to get divorced from your wife because of shuruya, because of gebrachs, like, get the heck out of here. And they made peace, and everyone was happy. So that, that for sure, definitely learned from that maisa not to be Super machbid on chumras and super machbid on anything, especially if it's going to cause shalom bias problems in your house. Because causing shalom bias problems in your house definitely not the best thing that you want to do. Anybody who's married knows that. Anybody who's going to be married knows that or should know that. So that's a good thing to take it hard, especially Rabbi Nachman. Also, I always bring in Rabbi Nachman, of course, obviously. Rabbi Nachman. The one thing that they say about him was that he was not stubborn about anything. He did say to be stubborn in Avoid Hashem, but he wasn't stubborn in, in that type of regard. If like that's something like that happened, or he would, or 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 meaning, meaning that if something was going on, like he was, like if somebody came and said, "Oh, like, should I do this or should I do this?" Like the derech of 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 Rabbi Nachman and Breslov in general and and Anash. Is never to give like a straight, like a like an answer, like, yeah, dafka, like, only do this and don't do that. I mean, the Rebbe said what to do in the svarim, and everything like that. But he, but like, if somebody would come to him, like, stop, like, he wouldn't say to only dafka do that. Like, this is the only way. You know what I mean? So there's other ways, and we'll elaborate on that uh, topic more. I hope as we can go on. But these are the stories for today. And uh, I'll see you guys on uh, Thursday. Have a great day.